really just wanted more of Dodge. More of Dodge would have saved this movie. guys it's Quana back again with another review hope you guys are doing awesome so I stayed up late last night to watch Awake this is a new Netflix original post-apocalyptic film directed by Mark Raso and starring Gina Rodriguez and I'm here to tell you all about why you should or should not stream Awake um, so before we get started do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. I'm going to start with my non-spoiler review and tell you what I thought about the film and was it worth my time and then I'm going to break down some of the reasons why in my spoiler recap. So let's start with my non-spoiler review and summary of the film. The film is a post-apocalyptic film. Um, about a event that occurs that causes all of the electronics to fail and prevents everyone from going to sleep. And because of this, Gina Rodriguez's character, whose name is Jill, she has a daughter and her daughter is one of a few individuals who's able to sleep. The film details what happens to humans after they're unable to sleep for a certain amount of time, it shows the anxiety, the um, the depression, the, the, the mania that kind of sets in due to lack of sleep. And in all po post-apocalyptic films, it kind of revolves around a core group of individuals who are trying to survive because ultimately at the end of this lack of sleep is death. And being that her daughter is one of the only individuals who is able to sleep, Jill sets out to not only get her daughter to safety, but to also teach her survival skills in case she is left alone in this new world. The premise is very, um, is very interesting, and the original trailer kind of makes it seem as though the film is going to be dealing with um, some supernatural event or some extraterrestrial event that causes this. Um, it gives off very much of like Walking Dead and its early iteration vibes. And it's kind of in the same vein of other post-apocalyptic post films that Netflix comes out with probably once or twice a year. Um, and it's kind of, this trend kind of began with Bird Box. Um, the film stars Gina Rodriguez as Jill. Um, and you might know Gina Rodriguez from her award-winning show, Jane the Virgin. She's kind of crossed over into doing more action-related projects and more projects that are behind the camera as well. And there are some hits and misses with that. I think Gina Rodriguez is incredibly charming in the role of Jane the Virgin, which is where I was first introduced to her as. Um, in some of her action roles, she's had some hits and misses. I think that she is somewhat competent in this role. However, she struggles at times to really project emotion and it, the character kind of suffers for that, especially due to one of the main issues with this film, which is just the lack of script and the lack of plot. You're basically watching this family go into one situation after the other as they try to achieve safety, but there's not really a whole lot of plot there or character development. And I would bear so much as to say that there's really more of a lack of character development than anything else. We don't know much about Jill. There's a lot of inferences to her life before this event, but they are not fully fleshed out. There's a lot of holes and missing information that we don't know and understand why she is the way that she is. And so it really doesn't go so far deep enough to explain the strain that exists between her and her children. Now, her children are played by Ariana Greenblatt and um, you may recognize her if you're a Marvel fan as playing young Gamora in Infinity War. Um, I recognized those eyebrows as soon as I saw them. Um, and so she's an interesting young child actress. I don't feel like she's any better or worse than most child actresses that I've seen. I didn't feel like anything that she did was incredibly cringy. So that's always a plus because child, child actors can be a little cringy in the way that they develop their lines and deliver them. Um, I just felt like 
they didn't give her enough to do and there wasn't enough realistic action in there. That is especially true for the character of the son played by Lucius Hoyas who really doesn't quite have a fully fleshed out character and we know nothing of these characters lives before this event and we really don't get to know much about them except for a couple of tidbits here and there. So there's really no major premise onto why we should care about these characters. Some positives for me in this film are Shamir Anderson. Shamir Anderson, um, I did not know this, but he is the brother of Stefan James. So I was very interested and surprised at that. And when I looked at his IMDb, he's one of those people who I've seen him around a lot, but I didn't really recall where or what projects I had seen him in. Um, I thought that he was very charming in his character role, but I'm going to get into the problem that I have with his character in my spoiler section of this video. Um, there's also Jennifer Jason Lee who plays a scientist or a psychiatrist who works with Jill and Gil Bellows, who I had no clue was going to be in this film. Um, Gil Bellows has been in a lot. But for a lot of you who are old school 90s sitcom and drama fans, you will probably best remember him from Ally McBeal. That's where I first kind of was introduced to him in Ally McBeal. Um, I didn't even know he was going to be in this project. So that was very startling. And I think it goes to represent like there were some people who I think have significant followings and they just weren't advertised well in the trailers because this movie was really kind of trying to do so many things. Um, is it worth a watch? I mean, sure, yeah. If there's nothing else that you have in your queue to watch, then certainly give this a watch. But you won't feel like you've missed anything. And actually, after about 50 minutes of the film going in, I was actually shocked because it didn't feel like 50 minutes. But then there were only like 25 minutes left of the film or maybe 30. And I was like... I don't feel like anything's happened. Like, I feel like I'm just watching movement on screen and I don't know that we're building toward anything. And at the end of it, I felt like there were lots of play things that probably were left on the cutting room floor that would have actually added to the film a whole lot. And so I felt like maybe, I don't know if those things that were left, I don't know if things were left <laughs> first and foremost. We just don't know if there wasn't much of a script. But I'm going to go with assuming that maybe there were some things that were left on the cutting room floor and maybe they weren't as well acted as some of the other sequences. So they left those sequences in. But I really felt like there was a lot missing in this project that would have made it toothsome and, and really made it interesting. Um, so it certainly isn't as interesting for all the flaws that were in Bird Box. This is not a step up. This is definitely a step down. And so I don't think that it was really it's, it was really worth my time. I probably could have been better off trying to watch an episode of Solos, which is on Amazon Prime in this moment right now, or trying to watch Loki again. So I really don't feel like it was worth my time to watch. I don't feel like I gained anything from watching this film. So um, should you watch it? Um, that is up to you. But let me know down below in the comments if you have seen it or if you're going to opt on watching it this weekend. All right, so now I'm going to go into my spoilers and the things that really weren't me giving this movie a C rating. So for those of you who are waiting on my rating system, this is definitely a C rating movie. This is definitely not a B or A movie at all. And I'm being very generous with the C. Um, I'm being very generous with the C. It's like the C, but the C for the kid who you like. They didn't understand everything, but you liked them and they showed up to class and they did some of the work. So you're giving them a C. That's basically what this project was for me. Let's talk about some of the things I didn't like. Um, we just don't know anything at all about the character of Jill. So we find out that Jill is a former soldier. We find out from inferences and panning the screen that her husband has died because there's a flag on his mother's mantle. We know that she does not have custody of her kids. 
And that is it. We don't know why she lost custody. I'm assuming something to do with drugs because there's a reference made to the fact that she can't have access to drugs. So she's going to have to go to the pharmacy to get something for her mother-in-law. And yet she is employed as a security job in a security guard in a facility that has access to drugs. Make it make sense. It, that did not make sense to me. So we don't know why she lost custody of her kids and unless i blinked which could have happened i am gonna full-on say this right now so if i blinked and i missed it please let me know in the comments if they made an address to that because i tried to go back and look over a couple of scenes to see like if that was really discussed with the mother and it i didn't see it um there's a lot of um so that's one problem because of this, we don't understand the strain between her children. Like her children don't want to go with her at first. There's obviously a strain there. Is it just that typical, my mom doesn't have custody of me, so there's some animosity there? Or is there something more? Was she neglectful? We just don't know. Um, and so that really bothered me because we don't understand the character's journey. The cast is so big. This is, I think... One of the reasons why when the happening, the M. Night, M. Night Shyamalan project came out that it was, I mean, aside from the premise of like plants, <laughs> that um, it dealt with so much in the beginning of showing like how this impacted the whole world globally um, and didn't spend enough time with the characters versus films like Signs. And the Sixth Sense for M. Night Shyamalan, which are very self-contained and deal with the smaller focus of the cast, and there's just glimpses of you learning about things that are going on in the world. Focusing on the cast allows you to focus on the characters. I think that's one of the things that this suffered from is we just see these this group of people just fleeing so much, but they're constantly around so many people that you really don't get to fully flesh out their character identities and who they are and what they're, what they're doing, what's going on with them. I thought that the idea of perhaps this premise in kind of a self-contained focus on how the psychosis kind of impacted the son and the mom along the way as they managed to get her to the hub would have been a better focus in allowing us to see and to learn their characters because I just don't think the character development was there. Let's talk about Shamir Anderson's character, Dodge. A very attractive man. I enjoyed seeing him on the screen. Very enjoyable personality. But I am getting very sick and tired of this trope of particularly black men being casted as the sidekick to a female character not usually black because I haven't seen any of these movies with black lead actresses. Sorry, that's just what it is. And they sacrifice themselves in some way, say, some way, shape, or form for this character. It seems like the idea behind this is it's trying to instill this um, idea of black men as being safe. You know, you take this character, this big black guy who in some way, shape, or form should be fearful or um, should cause fear in people. You know, Dodge is a character who's broken out of jail. So he should be a, a character who you're afraid of. And he's a big old teddy bear at heart. He's a softie who helps to protect this family. He goes back for them even after he's had a chance to escape. And then he dies. Like, I'm just tired of that trope. It wouldn't have cost anything for them to allude to the fact that maybe there was a way to go back and save Dodge. Or maybe Dodge wasn't fully dead. Especially being, spoilers again, I'm gonna, <laughs> this is, at this point, this is my recap, but spoilers, that Dodge was someone who wasn't as impacted by the lack of sleep right away because he had already been kind of trained because of his time in prison to go off of fewer hours of sleep. So we hadn't seen him degrade in that way as other characters had. So then to just show him escalated to the point where he's dead so rapidly in a way that's inexcusable. And unless I missed it, I kept looking for there to be a puddle of blood, like to explain that he had been shot. Um, I didn't see a puddle of blood. So again, it was dark. Maybe that was just the lighting of the film that I couldn't tell that was a puddle of blood under them because they zoomed in on his eyes, his eyes being dead. And I just thought, wow, wouldn't it have been better if he had been like unconscious with his eyes closed 
we didn't know and we assumed he was dead and then they revealed that he wasn't i mean we just have to get past this trope of like killing black characters the only black character in the film and this film was a somewhat diverse cast i mean there were indian doctors and you know the lead is a hispanic female you know or latin fe latin latina female but <laughs> There's a lot of white characters as well, and the Latinos are white passing, so, or at least not necessarily white passing, because they're definitely Latin, you know, they're visibly Latin, but they are not Afro Latino. So, for there to be like one black character in the film, he's the only one that I recall seeing, um, other than like a couple of the other criminal characters, and then to have him die. It's just like that. It's that trope. It is definitely at this point a trope. You know, you did it with Bird Box. And I was okay with it with Bird Box because I'm just so in love with Trevante Rhodes. But at this point, it's like um, it's being a dead horse. So let's move on past that. Um, again, I felt like some of the characters were just underutilized. Um, for Gil Bellows to show up literally like in the last 15 minutes as kind of like this inconsequential doctor character who we don't see in any other iteration, it just did not make sense. Ultimately, the premise, which is that they think that this was a, the cause of some freak solar flare event or whatever that kind of causes the electromagnetic fields or wiring of everything to kind of go haywire. It was so much of a less interesting premise that the idea that this was caused by extraterrestrials or something along those lines. Because then you could have shown perhaps some of these science characters. Um, speaking of which, I am almost 100% positive that the doctor, one of the doctors who was shown earlier in the movie, in the doctor sequence when they go to the hospital, was also the doctor who was there at the end unless I'm just missing that I'm almost positive that we saw him at some point and so the fact that he's also just magically at the hub um without there being an explanation for that like it was just like series of of you know series of unfortunate events or you know things like that it just did not make sense again I think the film would have served better to spend more time with the family in isolation, less time moving from place to place. Speaking of which, the let's talk about that sequence where the grandmother takes the granddaughter to church, you know, not just to pray, but basically to offer up her grandchild as a sacrifice because she knows that her grandchild has gone to sleep. Like, and then to have the awakening of like, okay, then maybe no, this wasn't the good thing. Like, there was no explanation behind that and it was just I guess a scene to let us see how crazy and psychotic people were it really reminded me of the mist um based off of the Stephen King st story and the one that was um directed or directed I believe by Frank Durabont um there's a character in there that is very super uber religious and believing that all of this is happening because of God. And so there was just a lot of religious imagery in here that just wasn't panning out because there's the idea of this little girl as being like chosen by God. And then the congregation is wanting to pray to her to sacrifice her. Ultimately, the officer like kills people in order to get access to her. And then at the end, we get the sequence of the mother needing to be baptized to be reborn into the world. I'm all for some good religious imagery as, you know, especially some good Christian imagery if it's used well. I just felt like it was super clunky, super clunky. And let's just get to the, the crust, uh, crust of it all. At the end of this, the family manages to save. Okay, the little girl is the one who figures everything out, which there's no background for this little girl being the one to figure things out. Um, so that was weird. Okay, in my best Cardi B, Cardi B voice, that was weird, suspicious. But then they kill the mother, bring the mother back to life. We get the scene of the close-up of her eyes and then we, it goes dark into space and then we hear her breathe and we know she's been brought back to life. Okay, but what about the rest of the population? Because to the best of our knowledge, there was only one other woman who they had found who had been unable, who'd been able to go to sleep and she died. So 
how is civilization going to continue? Because unless they find some people who haven't managed to die yet, who they're able to very quickly do this to drown them and bring them back to life, are we going to say that incest is going to save the world at this point? Is that what's happening? Is this like a reset where you've got the little boy and the little girl as Adam and Eve? Like what is happening here? So the fact that there's left in this way was a cute gimmick, but ultimately it doesn't serve the story well. Not when we're led to believe that like she is one of a very rare few because how many people, other people would have died and been brought back to life in those moments? Not very many. Um, so how are they going to be finding them? Like that's a big question, you know? Um, so again, it was an Im Im interesting premise that I think they were trying to do. I just don't think it was fully fleshed out. And I don't think that they... This is where when you've written a screenplay, in my opinion, you get some writers to read it or some readers to kind of go through it with you and vet out some of these questions and go back to the table and say, if we're making a choice not to answer these questions for the audience, why does this lack of knowledge really serve the story? Does knowing, does not knowing why the children were taken from her serve the story? No. There's nothing about her losing her children and us not knowing the reason that serves the story. It completely serves the story if we understand that despite her being labeled as a bad mother and despite this action that happened, she's this is what's causing the rift between her and her children. Like we definitely need to understand why the children so, especially the son, so distrust his mother. Um, we also don't even know, like, was she with the dad when he died? Or was that like a separate entity? Was that a separate situation? A good quick flashback, like a 30 second war scene flashback of them in combat and him getting like blown up or something. I mean, yes, it might be triggering, but that would have served the purpose of us kind of understanding all that. Like her staring at the photo of them together doesn't do anything at all for letting us know and understand like, how they're in this situation and what's happened it doesn't make sense so i just felt like there were so many holes in it and it really wasn't enjoyable enough um to you know an, an enjoyable enough of a story feel about bird box how you feel i feel like we truly 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 got to like and understand those characters because it was a self-contained movie we dealt very shortly, very briefly, about 15 minutes of the outside world. Bring the characters all into one place. Let us get to know the characters, care about the characters. Then have them journey out into the world. That's a tactic that works because if your plot is thin, you need to be making sure that your character development is strong. So that was that's my thought about this movie overall let me know down below in the comics did you comments did you like the movie did you dislike the movie did you feel like you understood the characters because i didn't um uh, i really wanted more of dodge <laughs> more of dodge would have saved this movie so those are my thoughts i definitely give this movie a c like i said i'm giving it a, a c on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 32. So I think I'm being super generous and only because I just hate to give movies a D rating. Um, so this is the this is definitely that kid that showed up to class every day and didn't get on my complete nerves. So he's getting a C because it's a passing grade, but it definitely wasn't anywhere near a B or an A. That's my take on this. Let me know if you agree. Hit me up down below in the comments and please give this video a like and please share it on all social media platforms and I will see you guys later. Until next time, toodles!